everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I get a lot of yarn dyeing questions from people, which stands to reason I have hundreds and hundreds of yarn dyeing videos and experiments here on my channel. But occasionally I get a question, and while I have a fairly strong hypothesis of how things may go, I don't actually know the answer. And so therefore, it's worth doing the experiment to try and see if there are any conclusions we can make. Sometimes results end up being a little bit more inconclusive, and then that just means that we'll have to try it again later on. Today's experiment is based on the observation that when you dye a yarn that is, say, 50% wool, 50% cotton, or tensile, or some other cellulose fiber, you end up getting a heathered yarn because the wool will absorb the acid dyes or food coloring you are using, and the plant-based fibers that cannot be dyed with acid dyes don't. And so I've had a number of questions about whether you could dye the yarn with fiber reactive dyes first to say dye that plant fiber and then dye the same yarn with acid dyes and dye the wool fiber to then get like a two-tone kind of heathered yarn. And so while in theory this sounds really really great, technically you can dye 100% wool yarn with fiber reactive dyes and soda ash. The colors won't be nearly as vibrant as they are on say just 100% cotton and if there's too much time, it can start to damage the fibers a little bit, but it does technically work. And so my hypothesis is that if we try to dye a 50-50, say, wool tensile yarn with fiber reactive dyes, we may still end up with a heathered effect on the yarn, but there might be too much dye onto the wool fibers that if we try to over dye it with acid dyes later on, we may or may not see much of a difference but I could be wrong, and so it's worth trying. Now, one fun thing about fiber reactive dyes is that you can use them like tie-dye with having soda ash uh, in with your system so the conditions have a much higher pH, but they can also function as acid dyes. So if you have acid in conditions with your yarn, then it'll treat the yarn like regular acid dyes too. So we're gonna dye four different colorways today, all on the same yarn base. Today, we are gonna dye the Aspiritas base from Nomad. This yarn is 50% recycled wool, 50% tensile, and so, if things are gonna work and we're gonna be able to dye just the tensile or mostly just the tensile in one stage and then mostly just the wool in another stage, this is a fun base to try it on. So we're gonna set up four different dyeing samples today. We are gonna dye two of these skeins using the fiber reactive dyes with soda ash. And then we're gonna dye two of the skeins using the fiber active dyes like acid dyes, so with vinegar. So we'll have those set up side by side. Then once we're done with that round of dyeing and the yarn cools, we'll wash the yarn and then take one of each of those samples to dye, to probably kettle dye in some acid dye color. And we'll pick the second color depending on how things look after the first round. So two of the skeins will just be dyed once and then two of the skeins will be dyed twice, but then we'll be able to compare how things look. And so I'm doing using the dye as acid dyes as a control because presumably that should just dye the wool fibers, maybe only stain the tensile that's in here. And so with that first round, if the results that we get in the end look very similar to one another, then that might help us have some conclusions. But again, I honestly don't know how things will turn out. <laughs> I had already pre-soaked the Asparitas in some plain tap water for a couple of hours, but I now need to pre-soak it in either an acidic solution or a more basic solution. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves for measuring out the soda ash. Following the conditions that I used in Dye Pop PS15, which was the first time I ever played with fiber reactive dyes on both wool and cotton. I added six tablespoons of white vinegar to eight cups of warm tap water for our acidic solution. And then I measured out between one to two ounces of soda ash, and I decided to go in the middle of that range and measure out one and a half ounces of soda ash and dissolve that into 16 cups of warm tap water 
to soak the other two skeins. The yarn is already well saturated, but I figured we would still go ahead and pre-soak everything for at least 20 minutes in their respective diaphs. It has been a long time since I have used my fiber reactive dyes. I honestly need to use them more and I hope this summer I will do a lot more projects with them. Today we are going to use the color grape, which I picked because it's a little bit of a deepish purple, but it also doesn't require quite as much pigment as say a black or nightshade that I have, and it's not I don't think it's as much of a bleeder concern as the turquoise color that I also have. And so that's the main reason why I picked this. Maybe I need to do another video at some point about using urea and not using urea to see if I see any difference when it comes to making my stock solutions. But because I used urea in Dipot PS15, we're gonna use that today. I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on for measuring out the urea and dye. And I measured out two tablespoons of urea and dissolved it into two cups of hot tap water. For this grape color, Dharma recommends that you use a ratio of two teaspoons of the grape dye per one cup of water. So I measured out uh, four teaspoons of this grape dye. Typically, I measure out dyes by weight instead of by volume, but since I knew that these proportions worked well in the past, I wanted to stick with these proportions for this video. All right, I have added little V's to the zip ties of the yarn that was treated with vinegar, and then nothing to the yarn that was treated with soda ash. And I've added the two skeins into separate buckets, and we're gonna start applying the dye. I wanted to do a hand-painted approach followed by steaming because that's just an easy way to keep them separate. And honestly, I'm not sure about heat immersion dyeing cotton fiber. And so I'm gonna attempt using my turkey baster to add similar, as much as I can, amounts of dye to each. And I really don't wanna to make too much of a mess. There's not a lot of liquid in the yarn. Okay, let's start working it through. We'll do the vinegar first. Uh, dyeing yarn with uh, like tie-dye is often a different process in that the concentration matters a lot more than it does when we're dyeing wool. Um, and so since this is effectively in this container dyeing with acid dyes, things are gonna strike a lot faster but we do have a non superwash yarn so that should work in our favor at least a little bit when it comes to trying to get reasonable coverage here now there is not any extra liquid in here i may add extra liquid at some point but i do really want to try to saturate this dye on the yarn and i don't want to dilute uh, the soda ash and things too much. But so far, I'm not really able to push this through too much, so we'll see. We may have to add some water. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this may have not been the best plan, but we're gonna try to spread. We're gonna just do 60 here all at once, and then we'll do 60 on the other. We're gonna try our best to help these colors work through. Cause see if I squeeze it, the color comes out. And what's funny is like, this is totally not the way I would go about uh, dyeing yarn with acid dyes like at all. This is not the way that I would normally do a tonal, but I just didn't know if I wanted to try doing like a full on kettle. We are starting to get good coverage though. So this is an interesting side by side comparison on its own because again, we've got the same yarn base and we're seeing how it is gonna take up color under these different conditions while I hopefully do not make too big of a mess. And so yeah, I'm wondering just after this first round how similar or different the colors may or may not look. Certainly, we have something that is tonal here with lighter patches and deeper patches and not everything 
has set onto the yarn. Right now this is looking like a very warm toned purple. It, if I remember correctly, it was cooler toned in the end, but I also used another color alongside it. Oh good, we're getting decent coverage here now. So that is good. Ooh, I guess I do want to go ahead and try to use up all this dye I mixed, even though I know it's probably gonna be way too much dye and we may have a ton of rinsing later on, but we're gonna, we're gonna try for science, right? Let's see how much is left. Okay, we're gonna do about half of that there. And the other half over here. And my hands are still vinegary, so I am going, I considered doing this in my catering steam pan, but I'm really glad I went for these buckets instead because, oh dear, as I hopefully, I'm not splashing all over my clothes, but I'm glad I did this because uh, I think that having like a, not as wide of a surface area is good. But seriously, why do fiber reactive dyes make me so much more nervous? Maybe because of tie dye? I don't know, I love tie dyeing. So interestingly, I would say that the colors spread a little bit better on the yarn with vinegar versus our soda ash one. Now, when you mix up tie-dye and say like one step tie-dye, you wanna use it as soon as possible to when you mix it. So that way you will get the best results um, and the best coverage because the dye under those conditions will start to react with water. But I do not think that that happens in acidic conditions. So, and I think just mixed with the urea, it would be fine. But anyway, I'm now gonna set up some steamer baskets so we can go and steam set this yarn. The steamer basket is still heating up, but we're gonna steam set in each of these baskets for at least 40 minutes. When I did this many years ago, back in that Dive Hop PS15 episode again, I did find that steam setting did better for using fiber reactive dyes as acid dyes on wool, but uh, I had slightly better results on cotton when I let things sit for 24 hours instead. So they weren't exactly equivalent, but steam setting is faster. And we did still get really deep colors on the cotton yarn. And so that's why uh, I am going ahead and doing this today. But my thought is that by starting with sort of a deeper kind of purple, we can then pick, depending on what we see, uh, when after we wash the yarn, but we can try to pick a color that is maybe brighter to use for acid dyes for our next layer. And now I'd like to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of the Chemnitz Fiber patrons, including Jessica Parco, Don Jans, Karen Siegel, Tamara Svanez, and the rest of the names you see on the screen right now. Patreon is a really great platform where people can support content creators like me, and in return you get early access to new content such as this Typot PS series, and I also offer other perks like behind the scenes sneak peeks, advance notice of shop restocks, and monthly polls where you help shape the direction of the content that I have coming up. And you guys are great at pushing me outside of my comfort zone, and for that I'm extraordinarily grateful. So thank you patrons so much for all of your support! I just let out a huge deep breath because this first step went a lot smoother than I expected. There was a little bit of splatter, but everything wiped off of my work surface super easily, rinsed out of the container super easily, that's really, really good. And I don't see any drops of anything on my dress, <laughs> which is always good. Now the washing, I went back and checked the Dye Pop PS washing and it looked like most of the colors bleeding out were the colors that were not the purple because the purple was the least concentrated back then. I have no idea if I used way too much dye here. I guess using about a teaspoon of dye per 100 grams of yarn, that may not be that extreme, but it also could be one, anywhere from like one to two grams of dye, which could be a lot. So again, we will see. But I do need to remind myself that when I started dyeing with acid dyes, I was super nervous and unconfident. And because I don't know the like ratios and proportions and things that work really well with these dyes, I am less confident working with them. And so 
That just means I need to explore it more. Uh, some of my goals for the summer are to use these dyes to dye some t-shirts and other things like that. And so hopefully doing some of that will help me start to feel a little bit more confident in it. But anyway, I guess for now, starting with like these ratios that had worked well for getting good color coverage with hand painted yarn last time, I figured that was a, be a good way to start versus trying to do some immersion dyeing and having it probably work well when we're using it as an acid dye, but maybe not work quite as well when we're using it as a fiber reactive dye. People often ask me if I use urea to help dissolve acid dyes, and that isn't something I've typically done. I mean, I don't think I've ever done that with acid dyes, but this dye, and there was a lot of dye there, it dissolved really, really well. Um, I didn't notice any clumps or chunks as I was using it, and so, Maybe that's something I need to try as well. I mean, that's the thing with filming all of these videos that I do. I learn something new all the time and I'm continuing to grow and build my skills. And so, yeah, I think that's the best part for me of trying new things or trying to revisit things I've tried in the past instead of just doing my favorite uh, arsenal of techniques over and over again. So I'm very excited, but anyway. I'll be back once, oh, I didn't set a timer. So I'm gonna go set a timer, and then we'll be back. The 40 minutes are up, and let's remove our vinegary yarn first. I'm a little nervous about, yeah. See all that? Oh, oh, that makes my heart sad. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Okay, I'm gonna set it aside. <sighs> set it aside to cool. Uh, just setting it, I guess, like in my sink or something. Oh, bummer. There is a lot, a lot of color in the yarn still. That's a lot of color down there. Oh, bummer. I was kind of hoping that maybe that wouldn't happen, but it's also like, we use a lot of dye. So let's go look at our soda ash yarn. All right, let's see. We're gonna pick this up. Ironically, I see less color, which again, surprises me a bit, but I'm gonna set this aside as well. Let's peek here. Okay, there's a fair amount of color that is down at the bottom of the pan. So I could try to like add some yarn to this and to see if we can get anything else uh, to absorb. Whew, look at all that color, bummer. But I don't think that I have time to take care of that today. And we're eventually gonna need to dye all this yarn. So, so unfortunately, that means today we are leaving dye behind, which always makes me sad. But sometimes it is just necessary. Now, I'm wondering how stained my pot is because I do see some like purple stains on here. Hopefully, will come off. Or if it's not gonna come off, then hopefully it won't come off, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it's possible, and I'll have to go back and look about at my like weighing dye powders to see like how much various dye powders weighed uh, to get a feel of how much I use, because it's possible that for using this as an acid dye, I should really just be looking at the depth of shade uh, and using, starting with one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. So, yeah, I have no idea why a lot of weights are in ounces and like teaspoons and tablespoons and things like that. But as time goes on, I'll be able to get more comfortable with the situations. It's still looking a little bit stained, but that may be as good as we're gonna get for now. Normally, we don't bother showing the cleanup. Okay, that's looking very similar. 
Uh, normally I don't bother, but I was genuinely curious to see uh, how, if the like, color that was left in the pots looked different here than it did in the other. I think I see less staining here though than I did when we had used vinegar. Yeah, I'm not seeing the same staining on the pot, but we could have had some staining there already. Um, but anyway, I am going to wash the pot, and soon, once the yarn has cooled, we'll start washing that yarn. I'm not sure how well it's picking up on camera, but our yarn that was dyed with the soda ash looks redder to me than the yarn dyed with vinegar. This doesn't mean much yet because we definitely still will have a lot of washing to do once the yarn cools off some more, but I thought that this was pretty interesting and it's not smelling too great. <laughs> Maybe that's the urea that I'm smelling? Huh. <laughs> but anyway, we'll, we'll let it cool. Let's start washing the yarn with the vinegar, which, hope oh, okay, yes, that is immediate, immediate bleeding. I'm just going to say, hopefully this won't stain my hand. So let's just go ahead and finish rinsing this off. And then I'm going to get my gloves. I think one problem here, just in general, is that when you're dyeing cotton, you need to use a lot more dye. And a lot of what you get from color is concentration dependent. If you have more water present, uh, you're going to end up with a lighter color which is not something that you see with acid dyes normally. Because with acid dyes, normally you can get all of the color to bind in the end. So, but you know, here there's, it's lighter, so that's good, but we still have tons and tons of color leaking out, uh, which is probably just the result of using way, way too much. Oh my gosh, there's so much color. So much color. I'm going to try, like as the water runs on it, you can just see the color leaching out. Uh, I do want to try to, oh my gosh, to get the color a little bit lighter before we try a soak with some center pole. Oh goodness. Because the center pole will help, should help, a bit to find some of the extra. I mean, the color is really pretty. It's looking more blue to me in person than it is on camera. Oh man, I just hate seeing that much color come out. Let's see how it's a bit better. I mean, there's still color, but we're we're getting better. So let's go ahead and add some center pole here. I think, and I'm gonna heat up the water too, because I think with center pole, it's best to use warm water but I am using a lid and then sort of soaking my glove in some to add. And so this should help soak out some more color. And even though some of the more water that I'm adding is warm, uh, I would say that it's just, it's still pretty cool in there. So, so I'm not gonna set this aside to sit for a bit and I'm gonna start washing the yarn dyed uh, with soda ash, but I'm going to show that at the end of this, so I'll keep each version separate. Okay, it's been a few minutes, and seeing all this in here is not surprising. The yarn is non super washed, so I do want to avoid like rubbing it too much. Ooh, the color is so pretty. But seeing this pink come out, I mean, I was considering trying to over dye these with pink. And now I'm not so sure. Uh, I don't know at all. I'm wondering, I was gonna over dye the yarn straight away, uh, but now I'm wondering if I want to let the yarn dry first to have a better feel of what color to try to over dye it. But, I don't know. I don't know. I believe that the purple color does break, but I don't think I've used it on its own before. I'll be honest, I hate this. <laughs> and I'm sure 
I'm sure that, and I know people have said like, oh, they use fiber reactive dyes as acid dyes all the time and they don't have like this issue. I'm sure it's because I used way too much dye, way too much dye, but, oh man. <laughs> oh man, I'm frustrated. If you just look, you can see the dye just sort of coming off of the yarn. Oh, it's so, so frustrating. I should add though that uh, it's possible if some of the tensile fibers had soaked up some of that dye, which clearly they must have, um, it's going to take time to rinse the dye out of those fibers where in those micro areas the fibers could not bind. I think it's looking a little bit better. That may also be some wishful thinking though. So. We're gonna do some warm water with some Sinterpol again. And hope that things start to get a little bit better. I mean, that's already starting to look much, much better. So hopefully, maybe it's wishful thinking, but hopefully, with this Simperpol soak, we'll sort of pull out a lot of that dye, so that way we can move on soon. Unsurprisingly, I was getting a little bit fed up rinsing this, and so I came and added uh, a bunch of tablespoons of white vinegar to the soak. Not that this would necessarily help, but I figured it was worth a shot, and then I just let it sit for a couple of minutes in there, and then continued to rinse, and I finally, finally saw some improvement. Uh, maybe I should have made sure to add additional vinegar in, even though with hand painting, the amount of vinegar I had should have been good enough, but again, this is non-superwash yarn, so who knows? All right, this is looking pretty darn good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go put this through my spin dryer. There's still a little bit of stuff coming out. I'm going to put it through the spin dryer to spin out a lot of the liquid and then we'll come wash it another time. Okay, here we are back from the spin dryer. Let's go into the water and see how we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and let it sit in there for a minute. So that way if stuff's gonna bleed out, it will. But now I have a little bit of a dilemma. I don't know if I should dye the two skeins in the same pot. That's what I wanna do, but I'm a little concerned one of them will bleed in the hot dye bath. Uh, so maybe I should do it separately? Ooh, I, that's probably what I need to do, shoot. We still are having a tiny amount of bleeding, but it is, so much better overall. So, so much better. All right, let's do one more rinse. Part of me wanted to do the next stage with like fluorescent fuchsia, but I think it'd be hard to tell if that would make much of a difference. But all right, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer and then we'll hang up one of them to dry. Um, and the other, well, we'll get ready for the next stage. For our yarn dye with soda ash, I'm gonna go ahead and start with warm water. And the color that's coming out does look different to me, which is pretty cool. It will truly be ironic. And okay, there's still a fair amount of color coming out here. It's definitely more cranberry color versus fuchsia. Uh, so maybe there is like a pH dependent thing, and maybe I even see some breaking on the yarn. That's pretty cool. Um, let me fill this up again. See, on this one I was expecting a lot of bleeding, so I'm not as frustrated as I was with the beginning of the last one. But oddly, it almost looks like there's an ombre to the like liquid in here, which is interesting. <laughs> Okay, I can't tell if it's getting lighter or feeling like more of the same. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's start adding some water and see how things are going. Oh my god. Oh no, there's still color coming out. 
All right, but it's a lot less. A lot, lot, lot less. So let's go ahead and I'm just sort of bringing the center pole. I'm gonna do a cap and then a good like finger covering of it. A little bit of this goes a long way. And I would say that at this point with both of the colorways, oh, I just should be a bit warmer. I have added, removed enough color that it probably won't stain me anymore. But we'll see. So anyway, I'm going to set this aside for a little bit. Hey, the color here with the soda ash yarn is starting to look the same as it does on the vinegar yarn. It's looking like a bright pink. But the color in the fiber still feels different to me. Uh, I definitely see things and fibers sticking in here that look like they haven't picked up dye. And in this one, we have a lighter patch. I suppose another fun way to have done this would have been to, oh goodness, if I had dyed just half the stain in one and then the whole stain all over, then that could be pretty fun. Um, but I think the side by side, whoa! Is this one gonna be done faster? I mean, I'm still seeing some color come out. But like, that's not bad at all. Oh my gosh, why is this one so much better? Like, I've never had cotton resolve this fast. You know, it could be because the wool in here could have absorbed some of that color as well. I hope I'm not damaging the yarn for this. I really, really like the Asperita space. Okay, we're gonna do another Centerpole soak, trying to treat the yarn the same. Centerpole is pretty peach neutral, and so that's not going to affect the pH on the yarn. It's not doing the soak. It's rinsing with water that will bring the pH more to the pH that my tap water is on both of them. I mean, this one's almost done, but I'm still gonna do a good soak with this simple hold because why not? Rinsing out the rest of the synthor pole, I held my breath, but after just like two rinses, the water was clear. Phew! All right, let's take a look. I mean, that is so clear. This is totally the opposite of what I expected to happen, but this is why I show the washing stage. So anyway, through the spin dryer, one will go get hung up to dry, and then the other I'll bring over here so we can look at the two. There is absolutely a color difference here when we look at using vinegar versus soda ash. And I would say the other thing that's apparent even with the yarn damp, the texture on the one with vinegar still feels really good even with a lot of washing. There might be a little places where it's stuck to itself, but overall it's not very felted. The soda ash yarn had less washing but it feels a little bit rougher even in the damp stage. Um, almost, and the texture, like this still looks plump. This one is looking a little bit more stringy. I'm not sure how like clear that is, but it's clear that, and you know, maybe I used way too much soda ash as well, but the yarn is not as happy <laughs> from it. Now, let's see how close we can get to look at the actual strands. And I think that this might be a little hard because of the way the yarn reflects light a bit. But let me see if I can come nice and close. So in the one we dyed with soda ash, I think I feel in here a lot more white or very pastel fiber. And it's very possible that that, what we're seeing sort of stick out, that and like almost like a white little fuzz that that's some of the wool. And that would be really, really cool uh, if that's true. And so maybe we'll see something different once we over dye this, maybe. As for the one we dyed with vinegar, 
the yarn does have sort of a heathered feel, but I have a feeling it almost looks like that whatever tensile fiber might be more towards the center. It is a lot more subtle and less obvious here. So I'm really glad we have one of each of these upstairs that we'll have for comparison in the end, especially, yeah, if what is sticking out sort of like right there on my finger, if that's some of the wool fiber, then that would be pretty cool. But it's hard to say what will happen. And so it's also hard to say what color because ideally I'd want the color to not make a huge difference on the purple we already have. But I also don't want a color that's going to be a mega bleeder. Maybe Frozen's the one to do and hopefully that won't be too much of a bleeder. I think fluorescent fuchsia wouldn't necessarily pop quite as much but with that deeper sort of raspberry color the blue may pop if this is going to work there. So I think that maybe that should be what we try. In each of these two pots, I have 16 cups of water. And I was thinking frozen, but I don't actually have, I think, enough frozen dye for what I wanna try to achieve. So we're gonna use some Caribbean blue. I know, I know, it can be a bleeding risk. But we're gonna start pretty low and use just 25 milliliters. Oh, but it's for 100 grams, isn't it? Ooh, okay. I forgot that I'm only dying 100 grams of each. So we're gonna do less. We are gonna do less. So we're just gonna do 15 milliliters of a 1% stock of Caribbean Blue in each of the dye baths. And here goes. Okay, there is no acid in either of these containers yet but we'll be changing that shortly. But first, we are gonna add our yarn. And so we're gonna have one skein of yarn go into each of the pots. And the hope is that on this skein that previously had that soda ash, that maybe we'll see some of that blue pick up on some of the other strands. And so hopefully this is enough blue to maybe see some difference, but it won't affect the other color very much. That is my hope. And so I guess we'll just have to see how that goes. But now we do need to add acid. Okay, we've got 16 cups of water. Let's add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar, and we might do more. Two, three, four, five, six. At this depth of shade, the Caribbean blue should be okay. We're gonna do our five, six here, five. Let's go ahead and do eight. I really don't wanna have to wash these a ton. Seven and eight. All right, and now I am going to quickly mix these by raising and lowering the yarn. So with our vinegar one, it should just seem like a more bluer version of that color. But with this one, if we did successfully dye the tinsel and not the wool, then maybe we'll start to see something two-tone. But I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take these to the stove and we're gonna start heating these up. You can barely see the yarn in there. This was the soda ash sample. But, ooh, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, but since things are starting off cold, I'm gonna set a timer for 40 minutes. And this is our vinegar pot. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat down to low for a minute and see if I can show you what I just saw. You see? I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it worked. It totally, totally worked. Those little, like, halo strings, this is the the yarn that had had the soda ash. Can you see? Those are blue. This is wild. Like, I mean, I suppose that there was a chance. It is super subtle. Super, super subtle. We'll have to see more while it's dry. There's still a ton of dye in the pot and the 40 minutes are almost up. But I think it kind of worked. Kind of. Yeah, so there's still a lot of blue in here, um, a lot, a lot of blue. So I am just gonna go ahead and add 
that's just the rest of the vinegar in there. And we're gonna add like a nice healthy glug of vinegar uh, to this one. And then our pot with the yarn that originally had vinegar. Oh, you know what though? Do I see almost bluish halo here too? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but this is why we're doing both. We're doing a comparison. Uh, it's gonna be really handy, but the interesting thing is that the, the dye in the water here is definitely more blue, less turquoise, probably because some pink has bled out. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and add a good old healthy splash of vinegar here as well. And I think I'm gonna heat them uh, just for 10 more minutes, then I'll turn off the heat and let everything cool off in the pots. And we'll cross our fingers. Are you ready to live dangerously? Cause I'm thinking we wash the yarn together. Uh, this was our original vinegar yarn and the dye bath is almost completely cleared. And interesting, I maybe see like a tiny pink hint on some of the fibers in there. I wonder if using the fiber reactive dye stained the cotton a little bit. We'll look when it's dry, obviously. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. It totally looks like it's a two color heathered. I mean, it's super, super subtle. And we'll have to see how the texture feels. I will say the texture here feels better than the other one I hung up to dry already. So maybe it wasn't just enough to sort of rinse it. Maybe it really did need like a neutralization. But here is the dye bath from that other stain. So cooling off in there did help. And I mean, that is a happy, happy Rebecca right now. <laughs> We're adding, it's really not that much dish soap. I just added some water to uh, the bottle that is nearly empty. I could cry. So there is something to be said for when you have a yarn that is a heavy bleeder, putting it in a stock pot with a lot of vinegar to reheat. And that's one thing, oh, you can see the colors are slightly different. Uh, that is one thing I did not try earlier today when we were washing after the first step. But, man, I'm wondering how much I can like pick out the difference without looking at the markers. Uh, it's super subtle, super, super subtle. But anyway, this is great. <laughs> I was not having fun and now I'm having fun again. Uh, I, think, I think that really I had used way too much dye and maybe if I had done some kind of immersion technique, that would have gone a lot better. But yeah, so anyway, I am now gonna go put this through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry, so we can come back and make some conclusions. But I'm pretty shocked. <laughs> Here is all of the yarn that we dyed in our video today. We have our first layer with the fiber reactive dyes, our second layer with the acid dyes, and then we have our vinegar treated yarn and our soda ash treated yarn there. Let's start by looking at this yarn that we dyed with our fiber reactive dyes, whether we were using it as an acid dye or as a, I guess, fiber reactive dye using soda ash. Texturally, um, the one that we dyed with vinegar is softer. Um, this, it's still soft, but it feels a tiny bit more rough. Now granted, I didn't do anything to neutralize it. I rinsed it, which in theory, depending on how the soda ash is interacting with the fibers, in theory it could dilute the amount of soda ash that is there, but uh, conceivably washing this in some vinegar water could help the texture and that may be something that I do after I am done filming these conclusions. Beyond just the texture there is a huge difference. In the one we use with vinegar there is more blue visible here and it's much more raspberry when we use the soda ash. 
I don't know if this is a pH dependence of the pigment or if it's because I think we were primarily dyeing the wool here and primarily dyeing the tensil over here. Now you can kind of see that the yarn is a little bit heathered in both cases. Here's our acid treated one and you can see some sort of lighter fibers in there and I want you to kind of remember that for when we look at the yarn, this yarn that we over dyed with acid dyes. Because technically here we were using the fiber reactive dyes but treating them as acid dyes so this one was really dyed with acid dyes if that makes sense. I don't know. I, I feel like it's confusing when I talk about it. When we dyed the yarn with fiber reactive dyes, it doesn't necessarily feel as heathered, but there's a little bit of a halo that looks pastel. And seeing that and that it feels like the color is almost in a different spot within the construction of the yarn, I mean, I guess you can kind of in here see, see some of that. Um, but some of that, like, paler halo on the surface, I started to think that maybe this could work. We over dyed our vinegar treated yarn with some blue acid dye. And if we take a closer look, both of these have a quality where you can kind of see a little bit of a shiny pastel in there. Now that pastel is like a hair pinker maybe than the rest of the color. And I don't know if it's because the tensile took up a tiny bit of stain here, but they do feel very similar to one another. We'll go in closer with this yarn in a moment where we have our soda ash treated yarn and then over dyeing it with an acid dye and vinegar to show how that turned out. And I think texturally, it is a little bit softer here. And so I think that the treatment with acid helped. And so that's why I'm gonna treat this with acid after the fact, because this one was heated twice. And so I think that having that acid did make a difference for this yarn. But when we zoom in here, we see something magical. Zooming in, you can see pink fibers and blue fibers. I mean, I, am shocked. Uh, in some places there were some lighter patches so this didn't have as much of one color and actually in one of the spots where we didn't have as much pink you can kind of see some of that white or pastel color that we were feeling uh, in just the acid dye treated skeins. But over most of the skein you can feel still some of this pink here but then see like a blue almost running underneath. I think that we successfully dyed the two different fiber types differently here. And my jaw is on the floor. I did not think that this could really, really work. Now, is it very subtle? Yes, it's very subtle. Uh, <laughs> so that is, that is true, it's super subtle. But I see two colors in there. Editing Rebecca popping in real quick because there's one other thing I didn't really point out here. We first dyed our yarn in a purple color and then over dyed with a blue and acid dyes. And so in the yarn we treated with soda ash first and then acid dyes second, the two colors that we see here are a purple and a pinker purple. And so the wool content here did get some color from the fiber reactive dyes that we dyed. It's just that when we dyed it with those acid dyes, the tensile that we had dyed with the fiber reactive dyes did not take up any of that blue. And those are the fibers that still appear pink here. So part of my hypothesis was okay in that we did technically dye both of them. It's just instead of having white tensile left over, that is now dyed. And so the fact that the acid dyes with vinegar really only dyed one fiber is why we have that heathered effect. <laughs> I mean, these subtle color differences are so fun. And it's really not just the light reflecting. It really does look like we blended two different colors of fiber together and then spun the yarn. Which does bring me to a big point. It would be easier and gentler on the fiber to do that, to blend the different colors you want to make a heathered yarn together and spin from there. Or even buy a heathered pastel yarn and over dye that uh, to get a heathered colorway. But 
I mean, this did technically work. And honestly, this yarn did not have nearly as much washing as the one with the acid dye. So I guess even that isn't that bad. Okay, right here, we have the yarn that was treated with vinegar both times. This one had the soda ash and then the vinegar. And you can really see the difference here in what we got. Now, we do have layered colors here, and so there are some shifts but we really were mostly dyeing the same fiber at the same time. And the yarn that we treated differently twice does feel like the color is overall deeper because we no longer have some fiber in this one that is as pastel as we do over here. And so I think that that does alter the way the yarn feels, but I'm so glad that I did those controls. I mean, again, I did not think that this would really work very well. I thought that there was a chance it could work, but I thought that it would just destroy the fiber or something. Now, one mistake that I made was not measuring the amount of dye that we had. Uh, I used four teaspoons of this grape dye total, which is a lot of dye. And I'm curious how many grams of dye that was. And so I do regret not doing that because I would say that for the amount of color that we have on here, I feel like I used a ton of dye. And it's possible that that same amount of color would be much more vibrant if we were doing a t-shirt or something, but there was a lot of waste. And so I do need to play around more with uh, kettle dyeing with fiber reactive dyes to see what kind of depths of shade that we can achieve. But I think that with the color name grape, I would have accepted, expected something a little bit more saturated like that. Uh, so I, I don't really know. Of course, this yarn is also a 50-50 blend and so colors there tend to look lighter overall. So I should remember to take that with a grain of salt as well. But I am so, so, so glad that I went for over dyeing with a blue instead of a hot pink. I think if I did a hot pink, the contrast between the pink and that blue or purple that we see would not be nearly as visible. And so the results would not have felt as dramatic. So picking the right color for the over dyeing is really, really important if you wanna try this at home. I guess one more time to the texture thing. The Asperitas that we dyed with acid dyes twice is plump, it is round, it is very, very soft. And it is softer here than what we had done just after the soda ash, but it is not nearly as plump. The yarn feels a little bit thinner a little bit more compressed. So I would say that, you know, it's not as good for the yarn to treat it that way. Like the quality of the fiber has been somewhat compromised in terms of the fluffiness and stuff. And so, and it's not about the heat or anything like that. That really is just about uh, the treatment with soda ash. So it's worth, keeping that in mind as you are planning to use soda ash on any kind of wool yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I need to give another huge thank you to the Chemnitz patrons for asking the questions and voting for me to do this video because it's something that I considered like an academic exercise, but I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to try and your questions and you know, voting made me want to do this. And so I'm so glad I did because the results are so, so pretty and beautiful. Even if I may not do it again, because I don't know, I'm just not a fan of these fiber reactive dyes yet. But again, I think I need to look at when I'm using them as acid dyes, treating the quantities like I would for acid dyes versus following a recipe for fiber reactive dyes and then just using that with vinegar. But I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, I still can't believe this worked. Like, I seriously cannot believe that this worked. <laughs> if you would like to learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon and the cool perks I offer there, uh, you can go find more information at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. I'll also have a link down in the video description. I honestly forget what the patrons were voting for me to do next month, 
Uh, but hey, I'm very excited because some of these Dipop PS videos end up being my favorites and I reference them all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I didn't film adding acid to it, but I did just soak the stain in some water with vinegar for a while. And I think that that helped um, some of the stringiness and maybe it helped sort of neutralize the fibers a bit. It feels like, I mean, it's wet, but it does feel a little bit softer. So anyway, um, I was just rinsing some of that vinegar out, but I'm gonna put this through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry. But uh, yeah, I think I may edit this before it's dry, but if I notice anything, I will try to leave a little note about the texture. Final tiny update, after soaking with some acid, it is softer. I think my opinion of like it being a little bit straw-like is gone. So doing something that is neutralizing is important if you're gonna use fiber reactive dyes and soda ash on a wool cellulose blend. I still think that the fibers aren't as bouncy as they were when we only did acid dyes, but the damage, I don't even know if you would call it damage, there's just an effect from the processing which is not as maybe nice as just using acid dyes, but it turned out better than I had originally thought. So I wanted to pop back in and share that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching.